Hi and welcome to another video analysis from the Deadball Area and RugbyDumpCoaching.com. In rugby we tend to focus on the gain line, but really good attacking play is all about breaking the tackle line. One of the best ways to manipulate space and a way to break that line is with a strike move, so I want to look at and break down a move that will be familiar to players and fans the world over. A few teams captured the heart of the fans as much as Japan in the World Cup. Eddie Jones has developed a team as comfortable in the close exchanges as they are in the wider channels. They're a team that try to play with tempo and width. And against South Africa, Gol Maru scored one of the tries of the year from a brilliantly worked strike move. So we're going to start by quickly running through the move and then we'll look at it and its key components in more detail. Let's align out to Japan and they play off the top. Tanaka fires a ball straight to Tatakawa who passes to Ono on the slide around. Ono fixes De Villiers and Krill and makes a pass back inside to Matsushima who breaks the line cleanly, drawing the last man setting Goromaru free, who slides in for the try. It's a great try from a well-rehearsed training ground play, but while it looks complicated, it's actually incredibly simple. Now, the first thing we should note is this is not a unique strike move, but something that has actually been used to exploit the South African midfield before. As we see here, Adam Ashley Cooper scored a great try against South Africa in the Rugby Championship. It's identical in every way, it's just off the other hand. It's also a move the Queensland Reds have been using for a few seasons, as we can see here with this brilliant try against the Hurricanes back in 2011 by Lockie Turner. All three instances of this move come from a line-out. Both the Gomoruru and the Queensland Reds tries coming straight off the top and the Australia try come from a maul that's set from a catch at the tail. It's an important point because it's that quick ball that takes all these defenders out of the equation, leaving them stuck in the 15 metre channel, which then leaves a lot of space for the midfield to cover alone. The setup is pretty simple. We have a first receiver, usually the 12, with two slide around or blindside runners slotting in directly behind him. These blindside runners are usually the 10 and the blindside winger. That receiver can be anyone though. As we can see here from Japan it's Tatakawa, and here it's Gitto. But for the Reds it's the 7 Bo Robinson. The key is they need to be able to hold the defence with their run and be comfortable passing under pressure. The 12 carries to the line and the 13 runs an unders line to hold the next defender out. Once the first two defenders are sat down, the 12 executes a pullback pass to the first runner on the slide behind the second receiver. Now the slide runner drifts wide pulling this third defender out with him, creating a 2 versus one with the inside ball and we have a line break. But there are a few key elements throughout the move that make it work so well. The first is that every ball carrier has two options. The first receiver has the slide behind but also the short ball to this runner coming on the unders line. And the slide runner who receives the ball then has two options, the inside ball to the second slide runner or the wide ball to this runner here, normally the 15. Either way, when the line is broken, the runner who is not used becomes a support runner and creates a second two versus one on the final defender, as we see here with the Gomaru try. When done properly, it's a difficult move to defend and it will work at any level of the game. Posing multiple options for defenders, it creates indecision even the best defenders in the world, as we can see with the way Jean de Villiers bites in on Ono. Ultimately, this move boils down to exploiting a two or three versus one and that imbalance it creates in the channel. Key points to remember when practicing this move is that the slide runner must take the ball on the outside of the blocker or else there's the potential for obstruction. Also, when we see an attacker drift on an angle like this, there is a tendency for the ball carrier to stay shoulders turned out. But it's important that the player who executes the inside ball tries to get himself square onto the defender to both commit them and to make sure there is no forward pass. If we look at Ono's pass, we can see that he works hard to square himself. Where in contrast, there is a definite question about the pass to Ashley Cooper due to the fact that Quade Cooper doesn't square his shoulders. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video interesting, then please remember to follow us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter.